Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and we are back looking at potential high-speed rail routes between city pairs in the United States. In this video, we will be looking at how that might work out between Phoenix, Arizona and Las Vegas, Nevada. Big thanks to commenters Q Bickle and Magnum Augustus for suggesting this city pair. The Las Vegas Metro is located on the northern end of the Mojave Desert at the southern tip of Nevada near Hoover Dam and Lake Mead. The area is home to about 2.2 million people, making it the 29th largest metro area in the United States. The Las Vegas Metro has experienced intense growth since the 1960s, with the population doubling in the last 20 years and increasing tenfold in the last 50. Las Vegas is of course known as a gambling and entertainment mecca and draws nearly 40 million tourists a year. Metro Phoenix is located in a broad valley where the major rivers and streams of southern Arizona meet. Phoenix is on the northern edge of the Sonoran Desert. The greater area is home to about 5 million people, making it America's 10th largest metro. The population of the Phoenix area has exploded in a fashion similar to Las Vegas, but even more pronounced over a longer time. Arizona is also a major winter tourist destination due to its climate, so a direct connection between these two desert metros is desirable. Before we start with the route, let's quickly review the high-speed rail principles guiding our thinking. There are many possible routes between these two metros, but really only three ways out of Phoenix in the direction of Las Vegas, and three ways into Las Vegas from the direction of Phoenix. In between is a hugely challenging basin and range landscape without much room to maneuver. Let's start off in Phoenix and remember principle number seven to connect Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport to downtown Phoenix. This is a slow speed four mile connection, but would improve the utility of other stations in the Metro Phoenix area. Sky Harbor has a tram system we can connect to without having to go all the way to the terminal. And before heading into Phoenix proper, let's take a look at some construction restrictions we'll face along the way. I've increased curve radii since the last video after some helpful feedback from commenter GDR Riley 420 to better reflect reality. This chart is still simplified for my sake so I can think up curves on a map without using a calculator. Here are rise and run values for simplified flyover levels with our maximum reasonable operational grade of 3.5%. I figure this is easier to follow and we will run into grade issues in this video. Out of the airport property, we'll hop into the Interstate 10 right away to save money over a tunnel to the downtown area. In Central Phoenix, Interstate 10 goes into a six block long tunnel we can't use so we'll dive down in the median and head into the area underground. This is not strictly downtown, but this area is developing rapidly. Our proposed station is across the street from one of the largest stations on Phoenix's light rail network. From there, it's back to the Interstate 10 right-of-way and the surface. There's no real great way of getting out of the Phoenix Metro that accomplishes more than mere exit. As a result, we'll deal with things like having to reconfigure this rather expensive four-level interchange of Interstates 10 and 17. After that, Interstate 10 is reasonably accommodating for a few miles. The right-of-way is fairly wide and is next to a drainage ditch that offers room to work with. At the interchange with US 101, we're offered a choice, get straight out of Dodge on the 10 or try to better serve the burbs. We're picking the burbs. Overall, I've picked a slower, better connected way out of the Phoenix Metro that actually works out well, as we'll see later. US 101 heads into Glendale, a city of about a quarter million and home of State Farm Stadium where the NFL's Arizona Cardinals play. This area possesses a sizable entertainment and shopping complex, but largely lacks dense housing. As Glendale is also quite large for a city that has no proper downtown, why not put one here? Also links the airport and downtown directly to events at the stadium and arena. The route would find its way out of the metro by continuing along US 101 and then connecting with the BNSF and US 60 corridor. 
With the exception of a modal facility, the BNSF right-of-way is wide enough for four tracks, but only contains one currently. There are some tricky parts which will require viaduct, but necessary destruction would be near zero. On the way out of the area, we could make a stop at the City of Surprise, population 150,000, which presents a last opportunity to build and service density. This could also be a destination station as the metro continues to grow outward. Since we're leaving the Phoenix Metro, let's discuss what lies between Phoenix and Las Vegas. This colorful map comes courtesy of the Bureau of Land Management, and it shows that thanks to the combination of the Mojave National Preserve, two quite large national monuments, and around a dozen wilderness areas, Eastern Southern California is off the table for any new development. This eliminates the US-95 option. In addition, when considering Joshua Tree National Park and two more national monuments, Interstate 15 is also off the table from Arizona, unless connecting directly to Interstate 10 near Rancho Cucamonga and Brightline West. I estimate this route would run in the four hour range and defeats the purpose. That leaves us with US 93, and we will get there from Phoenix via US 60. There we run into our first challenge, the Hasayampa River Canyon. This canyon route is consumed by US 60 and BNSF tracks, so we must find another way through. Though it is somewhat rugged, we can build through the low hills to the west, which reach a point where we must tunnel under the town of Wickenburg to avoid destroying half of it. At that point, we get into the US 93 right of way. Things are pretty straightforward on US 93 until we come up against this. But don't worry, it's nothing. Compared to the other side of the mountain, that is, and thanks to various factors, we have to go straight over and through it. Due to a grade beyond 5% on both sides, we're going to need a 12-mile tunnel to deal with nothing. Right after that, we come up against Burrow Canyon. We'll need to cross the canyon with a bridge and then tunnel through this hill because the US-93 route is too windy and confined to utilize. That brings us into the Big Sandy River Valley, which is also straightforward beyond a few viaducts to deal with grade changes and a few wider side canyons. At the northern end, US-93 connects to Interstate 40 and west from there, we run into Kingman, Arizona, the hub of global activity. As Kingman is the only city between Phoenix and Las Vegas on the route, and a major arterial highway runs through it, let's put a station here. This is near the eastern edge of town, and there's some development potential as the city expands in the future. We also run into a challenge in Kingman, some nasty, curvy, bumpy terrain that we'll need to tunnel through in order to continue along the US-93 right-of-way as it diverges to the north, from Interstate 40. After that, US 93 is once again cake with a quite straight flat portion until we hit our next obstacle transitioning into mountainous terrain. Householder Pass is a grade and curve puzzle that we can solve with a mile and a half long tunnel. At this point, US 93 has some broad curves, but is relatively straight. It has a very large median we can and will use, and the construction of our high-speed rail right-of-way would take place in a similar fashion. However, we do eventually run into this, which is as fun as it looks. This nightmare route that crosses the Colorado River right in front of Hoover Dam requires two and a half miles of tunnels and about four miles of viaduct to navigate this area at a speed under 60 miles per hour for at least a portion. This affords an opportunity for a first stop in Nevada between Boulder City and Henderson on the southeastern edge of the Las Vegas Metro. This is half a square mile of completely undeveloped land that could be urbanized with a high-speed rail station that could deliver passengers within a block of the strip in less than 15 minutes. From there, it's over Railroad Pass and into Henderson, Nevada, along the Interstate 11 right-of-way. I don't really love a station here, but I figure Henderson could use one. 
The casino at the station site in this image was recently demolished and the land will be used for an indoor sports recreation complex. Seems like an interesting opportunity to develop that lot further along with other properties in the area. As a side note, flying over this interchange would require the station platforms to be about 80 feet up. Also possible to skip this and tunnel under. Transitioning off the interstate, we hook up with a Union Pacific branch, which is a little windy and would be limited to 75 miles per hour until we get to Harry Reid International Airport. This airport dominates the area and is a sizable barrier to through traffic from the south. UP lines from the south near Interstate 15 provide a possibility of getting into the dense area of the strip, but it is difficult to reach from the UP branch as that abuts the airport property 1500 feet from a runway, has four at-grade crossings and can't be trenched due to the configuration. It's also just about as costly to try to circumvent the airport as it is to go under it. A four mile tunnel under the southern runways would connect with Terminal 1 and the airport tram system. This is not a satisfying endpoint as Harry Reid International has an infamous connectivity issue, so where next? In my mind, the most Vegas thing to do would be tunneling directly to the strip reconfiguring Las Vegas Boulevard and driving the train right down the middle of the street on a viaduct. Stations could hook up with the elevated walkways at major intersections and you'd finally be able to connect the strip and actual Las Vegas by ending at Fremont Street Call it fanciful, but it's my dream and my video here. Coming back to Earth, our line is now underground and could conceivably be tunneled to anywhere that could be afforded. The Las Vegas Convention Center would be a prime destination. There are also a few empty lots on the north end of the strip near the Convention Center waiting to be developed. However, my choice is more modest as the cost of this project has surely already ballooned due to the necessary US-93 route. This site behind Planet Hollywood has ready access to the Strip and also connects with the Las Vegas monorail. It is half a block from the new F1 paddock and right by several enormous condo towers. It's also a mile from UNLV and it would finally link the strip and the airport. There is also directly adjacent development potential. Let's call this transient urbanism. We've made it from Phoenix to Las Vegas. Now let's talk about the cost. This project called for about 35 miles of tunnels as we traversed difficult urban areas and challenging desert terrain. That is reflected in my price estimate of $43 billion for this 295 mile route connecting metro areas totaling 7.2 million. From end to end, I estimate this train could average 158 miles per hour for an express trip of about one hour and 55 minutes. Some other examples, catch a Cardinals game from Kingman, 166 miles in one hour. Surprise to Vegas to do some gambling, 260 miles in an hour and 45 minutes on a local. Even with the tourist draw, the price combined with the amount of people connected and lack of serviceable cities in between means I'm taking a pass on this one. I hope you enjoyed this video investigating the possibility of connecting Phoenix and Las Vegas with high speed rail. If you have any opinions about this route or high-speed rail in general, please leave them in the comments. I'm taking a slight break from high-speed rail to produce One Last Dreams video. After that will likely be a video on the defunct FRA Florida Corridor and then Stu's News on the 28th, so check back for those. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big, beautiful freeway.